Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here doing something a little different today. And I do apologize, but I am on my phone. So this might be like a little wobbly and a little weird as I reach in to fondle the book. But that's just kind of how this is going to go, unfortunately. I don't have my old sub anymore. And even if I did, I don't think I'd be able to make it work the usual way I do. Anyway, The Games That Weren't by Frank Gasking, proprietor of GamesThatWeren't.com and published by Bitmap Books, who happen to be one of my favorite book publishers just in general because they do some really nice work. Like, for example... I can't believe I have to reach over here and grab this. I really should have thought of this ahead of time. But yes, I have the CRPG book. I also have a bunch of other books by them because they do a really good job in making physical books because they've just been doing this for a really long time and they figured it out like right out of the gate. So I have a lot of their books and this is definitely one of them. <laughs> I'm not going to say one of the best of them. I do have some problems with the way that this book is done. But I guess for now, let's go into it. So for those of you who don't know, gamesthatweren.com is a website about talking about games that never officially released, whether it be because they were cancelled by the publisher or some other ridiculous thing happened in order to cause them to be cancelled. And this book is basically a tome of stories about these games, why they never came out, their development, who worked on them, and just, like, other little neat tidbits. So let's just turn the page past the forwards and talk about Blackjack. So Blackjack was a game in 1975, of all things. Honestly. Like, that is legitimately insane how far back this goes. But yes, this talks about a copy of Blackjack, and this was built on a really, really old kind of arcade machine. And all the text tends to go in the same way. So you've got, at the beginning, you've got, like, the inspirations for the game, who started working on them, a little bit of history about the industry at the time. And then you turn over, and it'll tell you about how the game was developed, things about the mechanics, and things like playtesting in the case of arcade games, for the most part. And then you'll start talking about the problems of the game, what went wrong during the development, what needed to be overcome that never really was. And eventually we'll talk about how the game was canned and whether or not like a prototype has been found or where one might possibly be found or whether, you know, the game just in general has been released to the public in some way. And this is for about half of the major mentioned games in the book. In some cases... Not all, but a fair amount of them. Probably most, if I'm being honest. I didn't do too much in the way of uh, number crunching. But in some cases, they actually have some really neat things. Like, for example, this isn't actually a screenshot of the Blackjack game. If we scroll down here, it says, two artists' impressions of how Blackjack from the arcade might have looked based on the recollections of the developer. They've also got things like this advertisement here for a completely unrelated thing that's part of the story. But yes, this is actually legitimately sick. I really appreciate that bit in general about, like, artist recreations of the game in question. And for, there's one of my favorites here, for example, like uh, USSA on page 164, because this game, this book is a chonk, and I will demonstrate that to you shortly. But here, this is not an actual arcade game. It looks a hell of a lot like one, but it's not. It's an artist impression of how the game may have looked based on a mock-up and a recollection of the game's features. That's insane. I absolutely love that they went to this amount of effort for a bunch of the games that showed up in the book. This actually stops showing up later because if we turn back to the contents page, you can see that... Uh, if we turn back to the contents page, you can see that... It's split by half decades and eventually decades. And when you start getting on to the later games, for example, you stop needing, like, these artists' renditions and you start getting, like, actual screenshots because they'd actually gone to the effort of getting more screenshots like that. But for these early games in general, having, like, these bloody things go on here, it uh, just have, like, these artist impressions give you an idea of what the game might have looked like. 
that's above and beyond any other thing that I've seen of this kind, which I really appreciate. And it goes to show the amount of work they've actually put into this book. So uh, let's talk about the writing. So the writing itself is actually, uh, oh, before we continue, there's also these, these two page spreads. So these two page spreads are just, they're much more minor. You usually have like one developer uh, just talking about what's going on here, including this little tidbit that I didn't know about where the game's name actually came from. But yes, it tells you a little bit about the game and it shows you a bit more of an in-depth screenshot, but you don't get as much of a tale about it. So yeah, as I was saying, let's talk about the writing for a bit. So as I said, all of the writing in the book does tend to be the similar sort of layout and structure to it. So you'll get where the inspirations were, who worked on it, how they worked on it, what the problems they hit, and whether or not you're actually able to... Excuse me. Whether or not you're actually able to get your hands on the game, whether it be via a prototype or someone just dug something up and released it to the public. Again, this becomes a lot less frequent as you get further on into the book. And the writing itself is... I guess it's fine. My main problem with it is that it's a bit clinical. It's a bit obvious. Uh, it's just, it's very layman's terms. They don't try and pretty it up in any way. It's very just, it's very much just, this is what happened, this is how it happened, and that's exactly what you get. You don't get anything in the way of, like, jokes off to the side or anything along those lines, unless you get uh, a developer making those comments, because it's very obvious uh, the develop what the developer's comments are, because they've got the speech marks going on there and what have you. Oh, that's obviously basic writing. What the fuck am I talking about? But yes, it's all very clinical. It's There's nothing particularly wrong with the way it's written. It's just a little bit dull. And that isn't helped by the design of the book and how some of these sections are laid out. Now, if we come back to, like, uh, the Aka uh, if, if we just come back to, like, one of the spreads, for example. Uh, is, wow, there's not very many spreads early on in the book. But, yeah, here's one. So if we just come back to a spread, for example, here in the form of Boxer, which eventually got ported to the Atari 2600 as Box Ing. This spread here, graphics on the left and right, a little bit of text for you to read down the, down here, and oh, I also appreciate the available to play thing here. It's actually a, it's, it's a nice touch, telling you whether or not you can actually go and find it if you know where to look. But this is fine. However, you turn on to something like Captain Seahawk, for example, and it's just lines of text for several pages and then it just moves straight on into the graphics including like the their version of what it might have looked like and then it just moves on to the next one and i find this to be kind of annoying because just reading these walls of text can be a little bit tiring they're surprisingly long and i feel like they really could have gone to the effort of trying to sneak these pictures in here somewhere to keep the text just a little bit more interesting by splitting it up. And as I said, the text is a little bit generic. It doesn't take much risks in the way of uh, fluffying up the text a little bit to make it a bit more interesting to read. As I said, very clinical, very uh, to the point, and not much else otherwise. So, yeah, it, it doesn't really help the design of the book to just have these big walls of text here to read all the time. And I really feel like that even just a little bit of effort would have uh, helped out a bit. As for the stories being told in this 600-page ridiculous tome of uh, games that have been cancelled, they have some really good tales in here, I will tell you that much. And there was some stuff that I absolutely enjoyed reading. Like, for example, Oops. I'm going to read this out loud because, honestly, I did not believe this existed. Even after I read it, I had to go look it up. But anyway, here's the story. Oops was pretty wild as a concept, even in this modern era, it would still probably cause offence. Larry's prototype kicked things off with a human egg situated at the centre of the screen, with sperm swimming onto the screen from various directions to try and fertilise the egg. Beginning life as just a two-player game, one player would control the large group of sperm, the other player would control a syringe, which fired sperm-killing foam to try and protect the egg from being fertilised. 1979. Seriously? Like, that's probably the most egregious one in the entire book. But there are a great amount of tales here. If I just, like, scroll back to the... 
contents pages here. So uh, Vindicators, for example, is a bit of an interesting one because the funny thing is it reveals this is an Atari Lynx port. This was originally an arcade game that was going to get ported to the Atari Lynx and it was practically almost there. Like it was practically finished by the time it got cancelled because the Atari Lynx bombed. But it has a nice little tidbit about how they had to develop Atari, Atari Lynx games on the Commodore Amiga because that was what the developing development kit was worked uh, was written on, and that was where it worked the best. And it's kind of amazing, mainly because, um, yeah, they had their own computer at the time, the Atari ST, but the development kit didn't work on it. So whenever anyone would come around, like the big brass, they had to hide the Amiga branding from view to say, hey, we're all Atari ST people here. And that's, that's kind of funny. And there's a bunch of other stories like that about Attack of the Muni Camels 89, about how that was meant for the Konix multi-system, which just, like, which just plopped. And things like how USSA was uh, cancelled in favour of NARC, which is a famous arcade game where drug-dealing criminals would basically explode into violent pieces. It was incredibly violent for the time. And I'm actually kind of disappointed that USSA didn't come out because I'm not that big of a fan of NARC. So, well, who knows? But you've got all sorts of little interesting tidbits and tales from development going on in these books. And it makes the generic writing a little bit easier to get through as a result, because there's always going to be something interesting around the next corner. And it's helped out by the fact that the book is really well produced, because, well, it's a bitmap books function. And, well, here's the thing. First things first is that it's a chonk. This book is over 600 pages long, and... If you will permit me to grab, yeah, this will do, I suppose. This is a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So it's pretty small in comparison to a bunch of the books that um, they put out before. Like, for example, the CRPG book is still a bit smaller, but it still looks pretty big in, in comparison to that controller. But there's where the chunk is. 600 pages, man. 600 pages. It can be huge, but yes. And on the inside, you've got these absolutely lovely feeling pages on the fingers. I don't know what the material is that they use this. It's quite glossy, so you do need to get it in like a good angle in relation to light that you're laying into the room. And I've tried hiding this gloss. It doesn't look anywhere near as bad as it does on the viewfinder of my uh, Pixel 4 XL's camera right now, but it looks, it, it, it it's still kind of a little weird, but that's the only problem I have with these pages. They feel so good in the hand. The writing is nice and clean. There's very little in the way of typos. And th like this page material and this printing is so good that I wear glasses if I have to do a lot of reading or a lot of like um, eye work because I give myself eye strain if I do too much. But th thanks to these books being so well printed that even text like this that's more like this doesn't give me a headache if I read too much of it. So I'm able to read these without glasses. They're just that well printed. And it feels, again, it just it, it, it's legitimately hard to describe, but they're very smooth. They're very easy to clean and they feel great in the hands. You do also get like this little thing that lets you uh, set a bookmark as you're reading the book, which is good because it's 600 pages long. And that's where my major problem with the book comes in. Now, let's turn back to the contents for a bit for a second, all right? So you've got plenty of games here that just never came out, right? So you've got Mini Golf, which never came out. You've got a, a, a Boggle version of Atari, 20, a, Atari 2600 version of Boggle, which never came out. You've got USSA. You've got the Koenigs Multisystem and its major game, Attack of the Muni Camels 89. You've got, uh, um, you've got Eight Kings, which was a N-Gage game that never released, right? But then you look at some of the entries in this book and you think to yourself, why did they include that? And my major example is at the end of the 1980 to 1989 section in the form of Bubble Bubble, which takes eight full pages to itself for a BBC micro port of the arcade game, which is playable pretty much anywhere else you want to weigh on to into this day, right? And that disappoints me because... When you compare, say, the eight pages that Bubble Bobble gets or a game like uh, Burnt Out Cop, which, considering that I like to think of myself as a really big fan of games, 
This game that I've never heard of before, and I thought I would have heard about it at some point, getting 16 pages when arguably some more interesting games could have gotten some more. Like, for example, you've got Resident Evil here, page 426, right? And for those of you who think to yourself, Resident Evil came out. Why? What? How? This is about the Game Boy Color version, which is actually pretty infamous in the gaming community at this point. It got covered in all the major sites and everything, right? So, yeah. You would think to yourself, man, I'd love to hear more about the development of this game and why it never happened, but instead all you get is, th all you get is three paragraphs. And this is directly after a something like 14-page section on Party Squad. Look, page 412... To 425 so 14 pages on putty squad which is not only a game that has come out on multiple platforms it's kind of it, it's not really that interesting at the end of the day the i admit that there's a reason why it's here and the major reason is that this game is practically legendary it was supposed to come out on the amiga but then tried to come out on a bunch of other platforms and never made it for one reason or another it is one of those big holy grails of like missing amiga games so i understand why it's here but at the same time a game that actually came out and that we know enough about because we can actually play it in comparison to a copy of resident evil on game boy or one that i was a bit disappointed by which i believe is just a few pages ahead uh, that's sim mars which is again that's interesting because that never came out propeller arena a game that got cancelled because of 9-11. I would have really liked to have heard about this game's development, but it only got a two-page spread that doesn't even show, like, the best part of the game because this is... Uh, this doesn't even show, like, uh, the big city that you could fly around in or more close-ups of the other planes that you could fly around and attack. And that's just kind of disappointing to me personally. So, just that this game only... This game only gets one paragraph... Maybe they weren't just able to find details about this game in general. But, you know, that's just kind of how it goes, I suppose. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still a really cool set of games that never officially released here. Like, you get, you get, you get tons of them. You get, like, again, Attack of the Mutant Camels 89. You get USSA. You get uh you get a little bit on Bandersnatch, but that's only a two page spread. You get uh, a copy of Millipede, which is actually an interesting story to read about, and you get things like um, a Green Lantern game that never happened, especially these days with the uh, bloody blow up of the Marvel universe and all that. You get Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, which is a bit of a ridiculous one to put in here, if I'm being honest. Virtua Hamster, which I never heard about um burnt out cop was at least interesting to read about i wish i knew that eight kings was a thing before i did all my um engage stuff a while back i'm gonna have to do a video on all that eventually but yeah there are a lot of interesting stories in the book and these ones that i'm talking about like how bubble bobble gets eight pages for a single port on a single system that never came out is just a little bit iffy to me and I do think they could have compressed the page count down just a little bit to make more of an all-killer, no-filler style of book. But at the same time, I did still enjoy the reads. Admittedly, I did get a bit skip-heavy towards the end because some of these games are just a little bit weird. But yeah, the absolute majority of what's in here is still a really good read. While I wouldn't agree that it's a 600-page read, I would agree that it's still a relatively interesting read nonetheless. Now, I did get a PDF version of this book, so you, they might end up selling that later on for like $15 or $20, possibly. And if they release it for something along those lines, I would highly recommend reading the book if you're even remotely interested about the subject of games that were cancelled and never officially released. The physical book? Yeah, not so much. I did pre-order it because I am a fan of bitmap books and I just I do like supporting what they do. And if they picked up something like this and they will and if they thought to themselves, this is actually worth looking at, 
then yeah, I wanted to support that. And it's good, for the most part. It really is. I would give it a solid 7 to a 7.5. But I really do think they could have made some more changes, like uh, being a little bit more picky with what games they covered in order to make the page count a little bit smaller and make it a little bit more all killer, no filler, and fix up the presentation a bit so you're not just reading, like, uh, endless uh, pages of text followed by a couple of bits of graphics. And maybe, like, make the writing a little bit more flavorful. But it's still straight to the point. It covers a lot of games from a lot of different eras and genres and just general situations. Like, the, it's very rare that you see two games have the same uh, reason to be cancelled listed here. The stories themselves are interesting, and you often get some really interesting little tidbits out of them, like a game about fertilization, because of course. And again, it's still a really well-printed book. The pages feel great. The text is nice and clear. Everything about it is just really satisfying to hold, to feel, and to read. So yeah, I would happily give the games that weren't a solid seven and a half. Probably more than they could have done. Might not have been their fault, but that's just how I feel about the book personally. And you can buy it over at bitmapbooks.co.uk. That's pretty much all I've got to say. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.